Welcome. We are actually live now. There we go. We'll take that again. <laughs> Those of you that are listening, uh, we're gonna. I want you to listen to something. All right, welcome those of you that are live. We're gonna. This is our second attempt at this, uh, so I appreciate you uh, you kind of you, you chiming in and, and listening in and whatnot. So uh, today we are with Roman Gridel. I'll get into that in just a second. The music that you started uh, to hear, we're gonna play a lot of it today. Uh, I'm proud of this guy. So uh, that said, welcome to the fifth episode of Been There. Uh, this has been fun, and those of you that are paying attention right now, we're gonna watch this in a replay. Uh, today's an exciting day. Uh, we, first of all, the Wi-Fi has been upgraded and I think we're all good. I know last week Camille's, uh, Camille's interview was fantastic. We went pretty long, but she, uh, you know, she said a lot of stuff that I, that I hope, uh, sunk into a lot of people, but, uh, uh, but anyway, so the Wi-Fi is working. The audio last week on my end, I guess, wasn't that great, but I think everything has been worked out. We're back in the man cave, as you can say. Or see. Uh, I'm excited about our guest today. Uh, lots of reasons and lots of things to to talk about. So I want to get right into it before we, uh, you know, before we waste any more time. Ben There is a show about third culture kids, but it's also just a show about people all over the world. And, and that's kind of what gets me to my guest today. Uh, he's another guy, you know, I'm kind of picky right now in, in terms of who I, I have on, but he's another guy I've known for over 30 years, which is insane to think. Uh, he is a, uh, fantastic guy. He, uh, lives currently in Israel and I, I don't want to say this wrong. It's, uh, Roman, you can correct me in just a minute when I have you introduce yourself, but, uh, I'll let him, I'll let him say the, the name of the city he's in. Uh, but he's a fantastic guy. This is a show about people. It's a break from the norm. We're just all trying to get through what's going on in this wacky world of ours right now. So uh, I just appreciate those of you that are watching and those of you that are, will watch this once it's replayed on BenThere.org. Uh, but without further ado, he's a fellow classmate currently, like I said, living in Israel where uh, he is, if I'm wrong about this, Roman, correct me, but you're the assistant of, uh, curator at the Underwater Observatory Marine Park. He lives in Israel with his, his wife and two kids. Uh, he is also a certified dog behaviorist, which is awesome because we're going to talk about that later too. Uh, I've got a dog that apparently has decided to not like bicycles and people on bicycles. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pick your brain on how to train her. Uh, but, uh, that said, one of the, uh, more important things about this guy, he's a genuine man. And I, I know we haven't physically seen each other in a long time, Roman, but, uh, you know, I, I know you well enough to call you a brother. But one thing I've always respected the hell out of you for is the fact uh, that you're a musician and you, you picked up on that in an early age. And we're going to get into that later. He's a friend to many around the world. If you know him, you love him. If you don't know him, you're going to love him by the time this is over. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Roman Grudel, welcome to the show, brother. How Thank you doing? You very, thank you for having me on. Yeah, I'm great. Yeah. I'm great. I'm excited yeah, man. to be here. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I do want to say that because of the, the, I don't know if it's a time difference or whatnot, we have a small delay. So I'll ask a question. I'll try not to interrupt you. Okay. Uh, but the, for the first thing I want to get to, uh, I know you, uh, I know your background, but a lot of the people don't, and I don't want to misspeak or mispronounce or anything like that. So usually the way I start this, um, those of you that joined late, I, I played a little bit of Roman's music. We're going to do that throughout this, uh, this interview, he he's a talent, and uh, we're going to get into that in just a little bit. But prior to doing that, Roman, if you don't mind, I mean, I haven't seen you, man, in probably 20 years in person, right? I yeah, think we, we talk, you, you and I have had some conversation uh, off off this uh, this interview uh, format, but if you could just tell the people listening, and I'll, I'll give you plenty of time to, to discuss, but what the hell have you been up to for the last 25 years, brother? So from uh, the last time I saw you, I, I think was in Taiwan. It was over Christmas break. And I want to say, I, I hate to say this, but I want to say it. I think 1995. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it was 1995. 
Yeah. So tell the people what you've been up to for the last 20 plus years, man. Um, well, I finished high school and I went traveling with uh, traveling. I went to Boston with Sean Mahan. We were had big dreams. Okay, I got to stop you real quick. I know I said I wouldn't do this, but I got to stop you real quick. There's an inside joke that we have to say Sean Mahan is Aaron Mahan's brother. Brother, <laughs> yeah. and you'll appreciate that. So, yeah, okay, yeah, go yeah. go ahead. I'm, I'm just just so, just just so we know who we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we went to Boston and we tried to uh, uh, we tried to set up a band. Uh, reality is very very different from uh, from uh, from dreams. And it wasn't that easy. Uh, so I was there about a few months, and I went back to Taiwan. Uh, I was teaching English for a while in the Kennedy Language Institute, just behind TAS. Uh, and then uh, I really had the, it, it, was, it was a weird time because I had finished high school, and uh, I hadn't been back in Israel for more than 12 years. So Israel was was as foreign to me as, as Switzerland was. My father's Swiss and uh, my mother's from Israel. So I really had nowhere to go. Uh, I knew I couldn't stay in Taiwan because I couldn't get a visa anymore to be there. And so my brother and I decided to, to try and come, come over here to Israel. Uh, he came in 1994, I joined him a year later. And uh, yeah, it's been a, uh, a lot of years since then. And since then, you've, you've gotten married, had a couple kids, right? Yes. I have two beautiful children, lovely wife. Yeah. yeah. How old are your kids? Uh, it, Noah is going to be 12 in June, and Itamal is eight. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I got to, I was lucky enough, you know, with these new, uh, it's kind of a weird thing that with this coronavirus, and we'll talk about, you know, your quarantine thing going on right now but uh it's as you can you can attest to this we've been you know i think tim brought it up the other night but we we've we've all been in touch but we haven't actually seen everybody but these these zoom happy hours and these these uh reconnections right they've been fantastic you know and and the cool thing is i feel like i i saw you guys just last week and in person obviously but um, you know, with everything that's that's kind of crazy right now, in a, in a weird, twisted way, it's it's been a situation where we've all been able to reconnect and, and see where we are in life, and and uh, just kind of go from there. It's, I mean, I feel like I, I like I said, I talked to you guys just last week in person. So, I mean, that's that's one of the perks of being a TCK third culture kid, uh, mm. and, and and we're gonna get into that in just a little bit. But the one uh, question I always start the show off with: You're a man who has lived in Taiwan. Yeah. You're a man who's lived in Spain. Is that right? Twice. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. 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 So I didn't realize this either that you've actually lived in the States for a little while too. So that's, that's kind of cool. Uh, but you're lived in Switzerland for a while. Uh, you lived in Canada, which I've known you 30 plus years. I had no idea that you lived in Canada. So yeah, I was um, very small, but yeah. 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 And then uh, obviously Israel right now. So having said all that, you're a man who's been around the world, traveled the world. Where is home brother? <laughs> uh, it's it's a great question and just on that question we could talk for 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 hours and hours and hours yeah. uh I, I i i really really don't know you know and uh one thing that uh that we said we might talk about is you know how how was it for you when when you went back home from taiwan and uh, with with me, unlike most of you guys, uh, I never really had a place where I could call a home. I mean, I'm ethnically this and ethnically that, <laughs> and uh, even that split, you know. Right. Uh, Switzerland, I it's 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 where my father was born, and we lived in a in a in a small 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 village. I mean, six thousand people, a picturesque village up in the mountains. But I was the only. <laughs> I was the only brown Jew, you know, and this is uh, <laughs> in the late seventies, early eighties. So I can't yeah. really call that home. Uh, and even when I came back, came back to Israel, I didn't speak a word of Hebrew. Uh, my mother, it was never very important for her to, uh, she always wanted, she, she always really worked hard on making us fit in wherever we were. And because we were always moving from place to place, 
she never really had the time and energy to put into into our Israeli background, you know. So we didn't really do holidays, and we didn't do uh, uh, like I said, I didn't I didn't speak Hebrew at all. So on one hand, I was coming back to Israel because I'm Israeli. Uh, on the other hand, uh, that's, that's your passport, right? If if I'm okay with asking, that's your passport. Uh, yeah, uh, I had Swiss Swiss passport. Swiss. Oh, okay. So I'm dual citizen. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the, one of the biggest shocks and the thing I had trouble with in uh, for years, for years, was when I came back to Israel. Is uh, not really fitting in, you know. So you were yeah. you're. Uh, you're not from Taiwan. Uh, you're an expat there, and then you come home, and uh, and people talk to you on the street. I, I used to I used to be panicked about people coming up and talking to me because as soon as I answered them in English, they they I'd, I'd have to get into this whole story of why I don't speak Hebrew. You know what kind of Israeli doesn't speak Hebrew? And so I used to I, I pretty much stayed home for the first. Uh, six six months i think it was i so you ask me where home is i yeah. think i think and that's part of the reason why why my wife and i my kids were born in spain we were living in uh, palma de mallorca at the time uh part of the reason why i found i i wanted to come back to israel was in order to i don't and I, uh, until today i don't know if i made the right decision or not yeah but <laughs> But I wanted my kids not to to have to question where they're from all the time, you know. I wanted to, them to have a home base, and I think we did it because even if uh, the aquarium the, that I work for has a few uh, aquariums around the world, and uh, even if a new project comes up and 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 we do end up going overseas again, at least they've been here long enough in 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 their home, their country. Uh, even though they're not born here, <laughs> where, Again, where were they born? They were born in Palma, both of them. Okay. Yeah. So, but even even if we leave, they'll have some sense of belonging to somewhere, something which I never had. Uh, now, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? You you remember my brother Mike? He yeah, I do. Yeah. What's he up to? He's he's living in Thailand right now in Phuket. Oh wow. Okay. And he. He moved around even more than I did. I mean, he came to Israel, and a few years later, they moved to the Cayman Islands, and then there were we met together in Palma. We were working together in the aquarium there. He moved on to Malta, and and he's he loves it. You know, he lives for that. He's outgoing. He 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 meets people and, and gets along right away, and uh, and and he loves this kind of life. And if you ask yeah. him where's home, he say wherever I put my head. You know, and and he's okay with it. I had a hard time for many years because I felt like uh, uh, I felt like I, I didn't really know where 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 I belong to, and if you think about it logically, it doesn't really matter where you belong to, right? I mean, especially for people like us who've grown yeah. up the way we have grown up, uh, you don't have to be, you know, nationalistic or patriotic, or or you, you can be, but you don't have to be there, right? But, uh, but uh, yeah, I was, that was an issue I was having, and, uh, and I wanted something else for my kids. Oh, man, that's a great answer. And, and actually, you, you touched on a lot of topics I want to get to today, and, and, and I think a lot of topics that people not only are interested, those that are watching, the majority are TCKs like you and I. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do want to uh, quickly say that the majority, I mean, this is only my fifth episode. I'm not by any means professional. I don't try to, to brag that I'm professional at this, but it's just uh, – it's a way that I've been able to get through this kind of crazy quarantine time, but it's realistically, it's a way I can, I can give back and, and, and talk to people that, uh, you know, know me and, and grew up the same way we did. Right. So yeah. that said, the majority of the people I've had on minus Calvin, who, who kind of gave me the influence to start the show, uh, everybody's been American in terms of TCKs. Right. Yeah. So when we, we all had that, virtually and literally the same experience when we got back to our passport country right so we're all american by by trade and looks and whatnot and and we all had a different experience moving back uh that's why i wanted you on well obviously i wanted you on because you're my brother but i also wanted you on uh 
just in, in a sense that I wanted to get a perspective of someone who didn't just necessarily come back to the States. I wanted someone who, who, yeah. uh, you know, had, had, you know, I wanted, I wanted to hear the story of someone who went back to another passport country, or I guess I, I know you're, you said you had dual citizenship, but either way, uh, that, uh, that said, you talked about the, the kind of the, I call it the blessings and the curses, right? You talked about it mm-hmm. as positives, negatives. Let's, let's kind of break that down a bit. If you, if you, okay. I mean, I know you said you wanted your, your kids to have their home base and that makes total sense to me. Right. Yeah. And right. yet maybe I don't want to put words in your mouth. I want you to answer this question, but I wouldn't change the way I grew up for anything. You know, it's complicated so many things. And I, I don't think that's, that's bad in saying, but it allowed myself and my brother and, and people like you and, and Tim and, and everybody we've talked about so far, all of our friends, the connection that we've made. I mean, we truly get each other. That's why I think when we have those those Friday night little happy hours, right? It's uh, as if it was yesterday, yeah. Yeah, right. So I mean, I, yeah. I actually was getting off right as you were getting onto that, but um, but we've talked. You and I have talked in, in depth even before that. But yeah. I think that's what makes that connection so strong. I mean, people here have their their connections, and that's great. And and I don't judge that. I don't look at that any different. I think it's awesome. You know, it's just not our story right so um but getting let's let's dive a little deeper i mean in terms of blessings and curses you lived if i remember right you moved to taiwan in 85 you were there about a year or two before i was right right okay so and and prior to that you lived in canada and you you grew up in other countries other than switzerland or israel so what do you view blessings and curses in depth? Like what are the blessings about growing up as a third culture kid? And I don't even know if you count as, I mean, you count as a third culture kid in Israel. Sure. I think you're about a fifth culture kid, man, the way, <laughs> the way, uh, the way your uh, life has been. So, um, but in terms of, in terms of positivity, blessings, what are the biggest blessings about growing up the way we did? And then on the same note, what are the biggest curses? If you go ahead okay. and answer that. So. Well, for me, I think uh, moving to Israel highlights what I'm going to talk about even more. Uh, the blessing has to be the how can I put this? I'm trying to I'm trying to find the right words to describe it because it's uh, it's really kind of deep. Is the, the get, exposure, get, deep. get deep, brother? We got time, so go ahead. <laughs> the exposure that we had to each other's yeah. cultures. I'm not just yeah. talking about Taiwan, but look at the just the makeup of of the group that we were in. Yeah, mm-hmm. we had Americans, Chinese, Canadians, Japanese, Brazilians, uh, Richards, Palestinian, Dutch. I'm Israeli, Swiss. I mean, just. People from everywhere. Kami was from Iran. Uh, I remember going to to you, 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 if someone blindfolded you and moved you from from house to house, you yeah. you 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 would know where you are just by smelling the, the 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 smells that are coming out of the kitchen. You know, I remember going to Gautama's house and, and his house. You know, the, the curry was Chicken. there and everything. Chicken, Chicken. Yeah. but, <laughs> but yeah. we were all so different. And we were all, and I'm getting goosebumps and really emotional saying this, we were all so accepting of our differences. And it's not something that we didn't pay attention to. We knew how different we were. And because we were all there and we were all without extended families, the, the closeness that was between us, you know, yeah. it's just incredible. And I haven't seen that anywhere else. I mean, I, I can't compare to, to to friends that I have that grew up together in, in Israel, but uh, definitely one blessing which I have taken with me everywhere, and I remind you I'm in Israel, and, and I'll get into that later. It's not the most accepting country in the world if you're a little <laughs> bit different. Yeah. Uh, is that being different from what I am is completely okay. And it's not just that I am willing to accept your difference. It's it's a point of interest for us. We're drawn do, to different cultures, to different dialects, to different uh, languages, to different food. It's something that that that's welcoming to us in a way, you know. So when I first came here, 
uh, don't get me wrong, uh, Israel is an amazing country, yeah? But it was built, it's a Jewish nation, mm. and there's a clear minority, and uh, I'm trying to be politically co correct here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to, man. This is this is live. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> I guess. Maybe maybe you have to. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's it's. There are lots of people who are very not accepting of of others. Do you feel that like an outsider very, there? I, I'm not an outsider. Not anymore. I I, I, yeah, I yeah. speak the language, and uh, yeah. I, I might not look like an outsider. To others, deep, mm -hmm. deep down inside, I think, I think we'll never feel like we we fit in with the mainstream uh, uh, views of the countries we live in, and that, and that's perfectly okay. It's because yeah. we, we 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 spent years looking at things from the outside, you know. Yeah. Uh, but that's definitely but a blessing. Is that I can today meet someone, and it doesn't matter where he's from. It doesn't matter his uh, social uh, standings and, and what what he does and what he eats and it's it's uh, you, you learn to accept people for what they are. And uh, when you're in Israel, uh, I think I think that's definitely a plus. Uh, it's not something which you can always uh, convince people, mm -hmm. but uh, but I think it's a uh, it's something good that came out of this whole story. Oh man, that's that's awesome. It, it's it's ironic that you say that because uh, I heard a quote the other day that regarding TCKs. I can't take credit for this, but uh, people like us. I mean, we we belong nowhere, and yet we belong everywhere, right? Exactly. And I think that's that's totally a fair statement right now. You know, specific yeah. or specifically right now. So uh, it doesn't matter where you are. Like I, I don't know if you watched last week or you watched previous episodes, but I've said the same thing, you know, coming back to the States and we're going to get into acclimation here in a minute, but coming back to the States was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. And yet I'm, so I looked the part, right. I'm six foot two white guy, you know, I've said it a hundred times already on the show, but coming back to the States as a, as an 18 year old kid was probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. You know, yeah. it, it, I, I was supposed to, to feel, act relate and i had none of that you know um and i'm guessing you didn't either right specifically no. with israel so no yeah it was it was it was very difficult I, I don't know what made it more difficult is uh if it's coming back to to where you're supposed to be from or if it was just simply the shock of of leaving everything we had behind you know yeah i mean i i, I I, I'm not ashamed to say it, but I, I missed my friends so much. It was it was it was honestly traumatic for me. Yeah. I, I I until today, you know, for if, if being honest, already I I have friends, and but it, it is nowhere nowhere near uh, what your friendship was like, you know. Right. And and. Uh, and maybe I'm doing a mistake by 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 doing this, but I I, I don't accept it even that it can, it can get to that level, you know. Right. No, I, get, like, I totally. That's a great way to put it. I I totally get that too. So I get it's that. It's like uh, it's like guys who went through through combat together, you know. I'm, <laughs> I might be pushing it a bit far, yeah. but they've yeah. had experiences that no one will ever understand unless they've been through the same thing, you know. And uh, and when I first came back. And and I, and I I felt alone. I I can't even describe how alone I felt. Even though I was staying in my grandmother's house, and and Mike was here, and uh, I have an uncle, and and a year later my mom my mom came back. I uh, the, the 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 simple fact that you guys weren't around was 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 a real shock. It was a real shock. Uh, totally. So on that note, then what do you, what do you miss the most? I'm going to, I think I'm kind of leading you into this answer, but I, I, don't, I don't mean to, but what do you miss the most about growing up the way we did? Miss the most, uh, obviously the people, uh, Taiwan. Every time I, I hear the word Taiwan or I see it somewhere, uh, it does something to my heart, which I I can't even put into words. You know, 
yeah. it's it's uh, to say I miss it would be it's an understatement huh yeah it's 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 that, that place the physical place you know not just you guys in the school but but the island and the people and the, the food and the, you know I, I think you know people in, in the end of the day where there's this places you can be and you feel like you should you're supposed to be there and there's places that you get to. I mean, I've stepped off planes uh, during my lifetime when I just didn't feel like I, I, I have anything to look for there. And <laughs> but Taiwan, and uh, I think my, my father was living for many years in, in Thailand, and I went to visit him a few times. And, and uh, there's, there's some similarities between Taipei and Bangkok, especially mm -hmm. if you're living outside of Asia. And I remember each time I used to get out of off the plane and head out into Bangkok and just, I used to feel at home, you know, it, the, yeah. the, the, the smells, the traffic, the, 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 the food, the, the vibe of the city. And, uh, and that made me miss Taiwan even more, you know? Yeah, totally. I, I, I don't know if you, you, you I'm sure you've listened. I, I know you've listened, but I, I was back in the States for 20 years and then I went to Shanghai. I yeah. moved to Shanghai, China for a couple of years most people, I mean, when I got to Shanghai, a lot of the, I, I came in with about 20 new teachers slash administrators, things like that. Eyes, their eyes were wide open. That was yeah. nothing. Like I was excited. Like this, you, you mentioned smells, you mentioned yeah. just being back in that humidity. You mean, it was like stepping <laughs> off the plane. Well, the irony is like Tim and I talked about this on the first show, but like I'd never been to China all those years of living in Taipei and Taiwan. I'd never been to China. I, I think I, when I was a little, little guy and we were in Hong Kong, we crossed over the border and we went to, to the outskirts of China. But yeah. in terms of being in China, China, yeah, man, I, I never had done that. But we landed and I got off the plane and it was like, ah, yeah. right? it was, it was like, relax. Like, I get it. Like I'm here. Then no worries. Which was so ironic because when I got there, everybody, everybody else I knew it, who I met through for the first yeah. time, they were they were struggling. Like, oh boy, what did I get myself into? Where I was like, yeah, let's welcome home, right? Yeah. Even yeah. though I'd never been there, but uh, but no, I can totally relate to that, you know. And it's just a it's it's a situation. It's not normal, but it's not wrong, right? No, absolutely not. No. Yeah, and and. and I wouldn't trade, and I'm sure you 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 basically have already alluded to this. I wouldn't trade the way we grew up for anything. You know, it's got yeah. its complications, it's got hardships, it's got confusion, it's got depression, it's got anxiety, it's got everything you want to mention all rolled up into one. Because you don't know where you're quote unquote from. That's why I always start these shows with where, where's home, right? right? Because it's it's such a tricky tricky concept. But in terms of dealing with other cultures. Now that you're back in Israel, and I, and I know that you deal with different, I'm going to guess the majority of the people you deal with are Israeli. Of course. But yeah. how, does, how does that, or how does your upbringing uh, allow you to deal with cultures that are outside the norm for you? Outside of the outside of Israelis? Other Israel Israelis or just people that you're not quite, I, I guess you feel maybe that you're not quite connected to, or maybe you are, but in terms of, Growing up the way we did, we were exposed to so much. Yeah. Did that did that help? Did that hurt? Did that somewhere in between? How did that allow you to to deal with other cultures once you got back? I think it, it definitely helps. You know, uh, uh, one one thing it taught us. I'm sure you you'll agree with me, is that in a way it's like it's like an out of body experience. You know, <laughs> it's like you can temporarily put your consciousness aside and 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 see the picture from. From, from from another view and uh, and it happens a lot here especially especially in Israel where where politics is so mainstream and where we are constantly uh, I'm, I'm getting politically correct again we are constantly uh, dealing with 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 threats you know even though to the outside world, a lot of times we look like the ones who are aggressive. Maybe we are, right? But there are definitely threats that we're dealing with all the time. I mean, the, the, the life in Israel, you do what you do, right? And life is, is like life anywhere else until the, 
the siren goes off and 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 they're throwing rockets at you and you're running to the to the to the safe room and yeah. and 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 that that feeling is is always there now i feel it and i didn't grow up here i can't imagine what it's like for people who who grew up like this uh, i i didn't do the army i came after after uh, the age of when when they draft you but you know people People go to the army. It's every, everyone goes. I mean, Noah in six years is going to be drafted, and she's going to go. And uh, uh, that's your daughter, right? It's my daughter. And I'm thinking about people who grew up here, and uh, and who obviously have this built-in uh, viewpoint of 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 the other side. And and then me coming from outside and uh, in, in the beginning I always used to to try to to talk to them you know uh, it doesn't have to be this way look how I grew up uh, I have people from all over the place and we get along and and once you forget your uh, your <laughs> your religion and your nationality you know this it, it, it can work and uh, I, I don't do that anymore. Yeah. I, well, I, let's I, let's. Uh... If you don't mind, let's let's talk about your kids. They obviously know. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess they know how you grew up. Do they have you explained that to them? I mean, what's their con? Because I know they're they're fairly younger, right? And, yeah. and how how do they? I mean, what's what's have you expressed the way you grew up? Where's your wife from again? I'm sorry. She's from here. She's, she's oh, she, from okay. Here. Yeah. Okay, so she's she's a she's a national, right? Yeah, and so what do your kids think about the way you grew up? Because I know you you've talked to them. I mean, just in the brief conversations we've had when when we were on those uh, Zoom Zoom yeah. happy hours, yeah, right. Like, how do you how do your kids understand, or do they quite understand exactly how Dad grew up? Uh, Noah has some kind of uh, idea because she was four and a half when we moved back, mm -hmm. so she was born in in like I said in Spain, and she went to kindergarten there. And uh, the the older she got, and you know, they, they ask questions, and uh, well, she's technically a TCK then. She right? is, yeah. And Itama was eight months when he came back, so he doesn't yeah. remember much. But uh, mm -hmm. but they do ask a lot of questions, and I think, like like I said in the Zoom, uh, I, I I I when the when the kids were smaller, I used to put them to sleep every night, and I. You know, you tell them bedtime stories and uh, you read them books. And uh, I was running out of books and bedtime stories. <laughs> so I started telling them uh, stories of, of my childhood. And 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 uh, the more we got into it, the more they would ask for it. You know, like uh, I'd say, yeah, look, we're off to bed. What do you want to hear about today? And then they'd say, oh, to Switzerland or uh, Spain or, you know. Awesome. That's awesome. And, uh so they they know a lot of you guys too. Like when I say Sean, the word the name Sean, they ask me if it's the the redhead guy, <laughs> Aaron's uh, brother, yeah. yeah, the guy who whose 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 mother was very colorful. You remember yeah. Sean Van oh, yeah. mom, yeah, or yeah, the yeah, guy yeah. who 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 a firecracker <laughs> popped off in his mouth, which is Sean McKeon, right? So <laughs> actually, I have to add them now. The the other story of the the scooter yeah. driving up the wall. Yeah, but, I heard about yeah, Sean John mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. The other night he mentioned that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of what they know about the way I grew up is uh, stories of of uh, childhood stories that that I tell them. And uh if they get it or not, I'm not sure, you know. Like I said, I don't think anyone can get it. Anyone who didn't live it, it sounds great and it sounds wonderful. I mean, you know, I, I, if, if I had a dollar every time someone told me I should write a book about the way I grew up, I, I'd, I'd be a millionaire, you know? Yeah. And it sounds exotic, right? But, uh, but unless it comes, you... it comes to struggles, right? It, it definitely comes to struggles. And I, and I can vouch for that. I think everybody watching right now can vouch for that, uh, especially if they, they grew up the way we did. So, and yet, I mean, like I said, I, I don't know if I actually made this into question form, but would you change the way you grew up for anything? Uh, no, I don't think I would. Yeah, I'd ask my my parents to be a little bit more. Uh... My dad didn't re really explain to us anything. He just made us pack up and move. You know. Yeah, no, I get that. I I can relate. You can hear me, okay? Right? We kind of hit a little snag there. You good? 
no, no, I'm fine. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I can My totally relate to that. Bit... Go ahead. Go ahead, man. No. He 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 was an adventurer. He every place we went, he he did had something else. And uh and he was really, really looking for this kind of life, you know. He really, really wanted to to explore the world and to to live in different places. So but did he, he made did us he move grow, from did he grow up that way? No, he was born and raised in uh, Basel in Switzerland. Okay. And when he was 18, he pretty much left, came to Israel to volunteer in a kibbutz. And that's where he met my mom. Okay. Speaking of which, your mom, uh, I mean, I, I'm glad to hear she's doing well. And, and you said she lives about 10 minutes from you, which is even awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. My mom as well. But uh, just so you know, like I always respected the hell out of your mom, man. Like when I think back to Taiwan days and, and going up to your house and, and just staying there, she... What a cool lady. And, and please let, let uh, on behalf of everybody watching and listening from the TAS days, let her know that we're all saying hi. And uh, she was a great lady. So just, just so you know, that little, little side note there okay. uh, on that note too, I didn't know your dad super well, but um, my brother and I could probably vouch for this a little bit different than your dad. I mean, your dad sounded like an explorer. You wanted to get out. He wanted to see the world. And that's awesome. My brother and I kind of got caught in the middle of, uh, my mom was born and raised in small town, Pocatello, Idaho. And then she met my dad in college. And, but my dad somewhat grew up the way you and I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he was a military brat though. He, my dad's for, I've said this on the show a couple of times. My dad's first language is Japanese. Okay. My, my, my grandpa was a world war II veteran. He was a D day guy, all that stuff. And then, then when the war was over, uh, he, my, my dad and my uncle, obviously came around. And so my dad spent his, his younger years all the way up until about eighth grade, I believe it was, is, uh, is when he came back to the States, but he, yeah, my dad lived in, in Japan. That was his first language. And then he moved to Turkey and he lived all over Europe as a, as a military brat. My, my grandpa was still in the, in the military. And so he got it. And so I think that's, that played a big part in, us moving overseas now in defense of my mom. She, she was a small town girl from, from Idaho, which isn't considered a wild and crazy, you know, state here in the U S. So, um, but they met and they connected and, and my mom, you know, give her the credit, the same as your mom. Right. So, I mean, it, it probably wasn't the life that they thought they were going to have, but that's the life that they ended up in and they made the best of it. And, and you, and you tip your hat to them, you compliment them. And I mean, I mean, my mom never once, hesitated or, or feared from that she just went over and that this is life and and she gave my brother and i great sense of direction and and so did my dad i mean I, I, like you i wouldn't change this for everything or for anything i wouldn't i wouldn't change the way we grew up you know it, sometimes i do wish it would have been like my wife for example you know we talked about wives she grew up in one house her wow. parents still live still live in that house right the way you know she and i actually and she and and luckily for my wife she was a her mom worked for the airline company and, and one of the airline companies and so she was able to travel a lot and okay. so she she has a sense of the world which i do think has helped in terms of my relationship with her she didn't live overseas but she from a young age she traveled the world so she got to see that perspective of what you and i went through maybe not not to a t and that's fair um but you know, getting back to my parents, my dad always, I think he lived that life too. And so he wanted his sons to see the world. And my mom luckily jumped right on board. It wasn't easy. I know that for a fact, as I'm sure it wasn't with your mom, but those bonds, those friendships, those strengths we made, I mean, it's, it's equally, you know, important in terms of who we are as people. And so the reason I'm bringing this up is I want to ask you this. In terms of the way we grew up, in terms of being a TCK, and specifically back to Israel, back to Switzerland, do you truly believe how you grew up molded you into who you become today? I, I, I'm sure it did. I'm sure. Like I said, uh, these things have stayed with me for so many years, and they're so ingrained and. In, and, and who and what I am and how I think and how I see things. Mm-hmm. And I think the skills it gave me back then when I was a teenager, uh, I still use them today all the time, you know? Because uh, I'm going to guess you still deal with a lot of different – I mean, obviously you're in Israel and, and, and the predominant 
you know, Israeli people you run into it day in and day out, but I'm sure there's other cultures too that have allowed you to interact with them and maybe the fact that your background has allowed you to to understand or be more accepting or accepting of those yeah. people. It teaches you patience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, from the simplest thing, like someone trying to communicate with you and not being able to to put the words out, you know, it, it, it teaches you or it, it taught me to to wind down to to try and see the 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 positive things uh, to keep politics out of of uh, of small talk, you know, when you it's first not, meet It's someone. not always easy to do, right? But, no, yeah, it's not, especially yeah. especially here, you know. I mean, uh, uh, especially here. But it teaches you to 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 be patient on it on a different level, you know. And I think uh, it definitely definitely stuck with me. Uh, and, and even in Spain, you know, so the project that, that I worked for, that we, we built a brand new aquarium, and I was there from the beginning. And there was lots of people from different places and uh, and uh, different cultures and different languages. And uh, part of what made me able to build such a great team over there was, you know, that the patience that I that I have in in these kind of situations. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I mean. Uh, like anyone else, I, I lose my patience, and when I do, it's pretty <laughs> yeah. tight. But yeah. but uh, it, it it teaches you. I think, bottom line, you you, you can see things from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. You can always, always, always put yourself in in the other person's shoes, which great point is yeah. not something that that norm normal people, <laughs> that people <laughs> who grew up the way we didn't grow. Uh, we grew up, uh, it, it doesn't always happen, you know. Uh, most of the times, especially here, it's uh, it's uh, it's us against them kind of mentality and viewpoint. And uh, I'm not budging, and and that's and that's that, you know. Uh, the way we grew up, like we said, you always, always, always see the other person's point of view. You always have patience to hear them out um, and to appreciate where they come from, you know? Yeah. I mean, I've met people who I don't get along with, but I could always, uh, I always at least had had the, the incentive in the beginning to try and see the where they're coming from, you know? And that's yeah. only because of the way we grew up. I mean, you grew up in a, in a school with how many? 42 different countries in TAS? Yeah. I mean, we had everything from... We had everything. We even had a neo-Nazi. I mean, and, and we accepted him in the end too. You know, <laughs> and more importantly, yeah. he accepted us in the end. Yeah. I mean, he he called me a. Can I swear? <laughs> Go ahead, man. Do what uh, you need to do. Yeah. First time he he heard I was Israeli, he he called me a fucking Jew, and I remember going to his house and there's swastika on his wall. You know, and a year later we were good friends. I don't know if he kept his point of view about Jews or not, but at least, at least, we could put those things aside and see the person for where he was, and he was a wonderful person. And uh, yeah, we'll have to uh, talk off camera who that was. I'm trying to I'm trying to think about huh? it, but yeah, I said we'll have to talk about who that is afterwards. I'm trying to. Think uh, about you, it. you know, I think Aaron mentioned him too. He was Italian. Uh, he came uh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. It's the guy with the shaved head and the army boots. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, I got you. When he first came, I mean, he was radical as hell, you know. Yeah. And and he was put in a place where, where, he would either, you know, I don't know, leave or 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 accept everything, and 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 he he did accept everything. And he, he did. did. If I, I didn't know him as well as you did, but yeah, if if I remember right, he did. He he came around. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's not like yeah. he didn't. It's not. It's it's something that came from from choice. It's not because right. he he had to. No one pressured him into, but he had uh, friends from everywhere, and he was uh, accepting of everyone in the end. And uh, it's 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 that blending. It's that multicultural, you know, exactly. unity, man. I think I think whether you 
want to or not, it, it, it just becomes the norm and, and you realize it's okay to accept people for who they are, not what they are. Right. So it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, no, even, it's even more than that. It's not because you do it subconsciously in the end. Yeah. I mean, I remember in the beginning you're, you, 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 you arrive in Taiwan and it's kind of a shock and different people, different things. And you're like all confused and everything. But once we got to high, even before, once we got to middle school, Mm -hmm. you you just the norm is that everyone is 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 different and everyone and you got people from every I, you remember the food fair in taiwan <laughs> yeah yeah, my, yeah tell that to my mom because she, she was in charge of it most of the time we were there yeah yeah, yeah. that was amazing even something yeah. so small you know and uh even at the old school right yeah. even at the yeah. old school yeah yeah, yeah yeah yeah. you and i are old brother we we oh. went to the old school tas <laughs> amazing yeah well, we uh, we talked about the perks. We talked about the positives. Uh, if it's okay with you, let's talk about the negatives about growing up overseas. I think I know what you're going to say, but I, I just want to kind of have you you say it. So go ahead. Uh, yeah, well, one th one thing which is negative is the thing the thing we were talking about before. Uh, not having a an anchor to 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 a certain place. If you feel like you need one, yeah, uh -huh. I'll say that again because my brother is a perfect example. He he doesn't need one, and he's absolutely happy anywhere he is. But a lot of people are 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 are, are built that way, you know. They need a they need a home base, a place that they can feel uh, comfortable in and feel uh, feel at home, right? So that's definitely a a drawback. Another drawback is is that I and I'm being again perfectly honest here. Until today, I have problems. And I'm putting it lightly with goodbyes. Mm. You know, when Bro. I have to when I have to say goodbye <laughs> to someone, I I yeah I need to, I need a a shrink with me. Uh, for the next couple of days, because it 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 some, some, something happens up there, you know. We we said goodbye so many times. It became then, norm, right? It never it never we never figured out the right way, but it became norm. It became norm, but I think deep down inside, it it uh, the the scars are there, I'm sure for everyone. Yeah. And even when I when I see pictures of uh, remember our senior trip when we went down to Kenting, the pictures of I think they put it up also in our group in a WhatsApp group of yeah. us on the beach. You remember that party? Oh hell yeah, hell yeah! I, I remember stepping away from from the bonfire that we built in the middle, and I went about twenty or thirty meters on the side, and I was all by myself, and I sat down, and and the thing, which was uh, we're in the middle of this party is wonderful people it's absolutely great i just sounded like donald trump uh, <laughs> no and, uh, no you didn't unless you're, and, you're about to tell me to swallow some lysol we're yeah, good no, so not yet yeah. not yet we're not there yet <laughs> but all i could think about is that this is the last time we were all going to be together you know yeah. and it was it's 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 something which has stuck with me all these years that feeling of the imminent goodbye you know and even when i came back that time in 1995 when we came for Christmas break and we went out to, to Mariners on New Year's. And I think, I, I don't remember who it was, was leaving the next day. And and you're out with your friends and it's it's you guys. So it's not just your friends, you know? Well, it's it's not, it's family. And I've said this a couple of times and I don't mean to cut you off. I'm going to let you finish that. But you guys are family. It's, it's not okay. even about a brotherhood. I mean, sisterhood, whatever. Like, I don't have to explain myself to you. I don't have to tell you where I'm from. I don't have to tell you my background. You get it, period. Yeah. Right? No, and no, so, it, uh, go ahead. Yeah. But no, it's right. It's, it's. I mean, like I said before, none of us had a family there. And uh, you definitely, you guys definitely were like family. And when I, when I call you brother, I, it, it it's, it, your brother you yeah know? likewise and, and it takes a lot i mean you know me you've known me for 30 plus years i mean it's 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 something i don't take lightly if i call you brother it's because you're my brother you know i've, I've got a biological brother right but like and he's 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 watching right now and i know he he'd say the same thing but 
Oh, man. The people that we grew up with, whether they left in sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, senior year, your family, you're, you're part of this kinship. You're part of, uh, of what this is all about. I don't care how long you were there, but if you, if you were there even a year. Exactly. You which get it. brings me back to, to what I was saying, which, which made saying goodbye even harder, you know? Yeah. Saying goodbye even harder. And, and because people were always coming in and going out, you know, it's, it's goodbyes. And, and when I say goodbyes, I mean, it's, it's, it's bye, you know, you're, you're gone. <laughs> It, it was it was there constantly, constantly, and even yeah. during our best times and and as much fun as we had, you knew that yeah. that the goodbye is coming, and and uh, and it's so traumatic that sometimes I, I I still think about these, and I have pictures in my mind of when I said goodbye to him. I remember when I said goodbye to Karen Garrett, you know. I remember yeah. when I said goodbye, even to 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 Melissa Stalnaker. I remember exactly where we were the last time, and it, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's funny, funny you say that. I remember saying goodbye to Rachel Wheeler. You too, by the way. I, I gotta like a like I gotta laugh about this, and it's funny you bring that up. And, and don't get pissed at me for saying that because I think you know it's coming. <laughs> Rachel Wheeler, I hope you're watching. But uh, Roman, those of you that are watching and, and maybe didn't graduate with us, but Roman, believe it or not, got best hair. <laughs> Right, in senior yeah, year. So, hey, man, I, I'm with you. I'm not. I'm not far behind you. So, mine's coming from the back and moving forward. So, I, I get you, brother. So it's, like, it's all good. Uh, yeah. But no, I, I totally get that. I re I remember the day, even even back in the states, when when Tim and I came back to the states, and I went to college my first couple of years with Jason Hoffinger, which I'm I'm sure you remember. Of course. Yeah. Um, but he and I went to college. We were roommates the first year. That allowed me to at least have somewhat of a, a i don't even know the right terminology but it allowed me to to kind of learn and then kind of transition back into the to american right yeah so um but i remember tim jason and i are i want to say it was our first year back we went to myrtle beach in south carolina we were all kind of on the east coast and I hadn't, it hadn't hit me yet. It's still, this is after senior year in between senior year and freshman year of college, but it hadn't hit me yet because obviously people like you, people like Rachel, people like Aaron Mahan, Sean McKeon, people like Debbie Shapiro. I never thought about not seeing them again. I knew we'd see each other at Christmas time and whatnot, but I never realized from a day to day aspect things were going to change drastically the way they did and, and luckily i was able to yeah. see tim and then went to college with hoffinger we were able to have that last chance minute boys being boys in, in south carolina in myrtle beach and when tim drove away it was like oh shit life life is different like this isn't this isn't about going back to taipei and everything's fine i mean we all Thank God we were all able to meet in Taipei and, and a lot of people still go back. But yeah, totally. This the saying goodbye. I mean, that's unfortunately is the one constant about being a TCK. Even when you're in sixth grade, how many times did you did you meet people? I mean, this is gonna bring back names and I and I hope you're okay with this, but like Tony Som, he's he's chimed in. Remember Tony? Yeah. Donnie yeah. Blevins. Donnie Blevins yeah. just left a quote on here. I'm gonna put it yeah, back on. Right. <laughs> people like that i mean we donnie blevins tony Sam, we played basketball together we played at typa in taiwan we i mean the the down my biggest i mean i asked you this already but and i don't mean to take over this this interview but my biggest issue is that we get i don't know if we get good at saying goodbye it just becomes a part of who we are and, and, and it, you put up those guards because of that and yet these people are intertwined in who you are dna wise like they're in your dna whether you saw them in sixth grade or seven or in, in 12th grade or just a couple of years ago exactly. these people are these people are family you and i have talked about that they're family you're family to me i haven't seen you in 20 years physically but you're family i call you brother because you're my brother right you you and get I, it I'm sure that that if tomorrow we met in a in a pub somewhere and had a beer it'd be it'd be just like going to mariners on a on a school night yeah totally and, and without hesitation you know, I, I wouldn't even I hesitate to go meet up with you. And the funny thing about that, what you just said is, I think you and I talked about this on Zoom the other night, but 
the last time I saw you, and, and those of you that are from Taipei or are listening in from Taipei, you'll totally appreciate that. But Roman and I were talking on Zoom. I think the last time I actually physically saw you was in the bar upstairs of the old Jake's restaurant, right? <laughs> and so, so if you uh, if you know what we're talking about, you you totally get it, right? So it's uh. Yeah, I mean that's that's Jake's restaurant was where Jason Hoffinger, Nick Chen, uh, Tim Wanger, I, I can't remember Clinton, Laurie, uh, mm-hmm. and and he's another guy, right? He's he's he went back to New Zealand, came back to Taipei. He he actually, you know, actually went back to TAS doing the IB program, so he was there a little bit longer than we were, and then he went back to Taiwan or excuse me, uh, New Zealand and struggled the way you and I have talked about. So it's not just a U.S. thing. It's not just an Israeli thing. It's not just a New Zealand thing. This is this is who we are, and and that's fine, man. That's it's 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 almost a beautiful thing, it right? Is. And the the fact that we can we can get together, and, and I hate that Tim and I talked about this when I when I first talked to him. It's pretty crappy that it took uh, coronavirus, right, to COVID nineteen to to bring us all back, but. I I love it. I mean, I the other night we were all on together too. You you chimed in late because I know you had to work and, and the time difference and whatnot. But it's just you you mentioned this. It's it's just like leaving. I mean, starting up right back where we left off. And exactly. what a, what a beautiful thing. Like I don't feel any different than I did than I saw you. Like twenty years. That's insane to me to think that I haven't seen you in twenty years. But but that's that's what it is. That's that's the 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 deepness of our connection you know we 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 all are in this i keep saying this and i know it sounds so cheesy when i say it out loud but we're all in this together you and i i mean it doesn't matter where we're from it, we all have struggled through these same exact things we've all had that anxiety we've all had that do i say depression right but yeah. it's 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 a tricky thing and yet i wouldn't change it for the world because i got to meet people like roman Gradel, because i got to meet people like clinton laurie Exactly. Right? I mean, these are people that technically I'm not supposed to understand at all, and yet I'm closer to them. Twenty years, twenty plus years later, never seen them in twenty years. Like I haven't seen my. I don't know if you know the story, but my wife actually got to see Kiwi Clinton Laurie more recently than I have. She, my wife, had a work uh, trip in New Zealand right before all this kind of went down last fall, and I didn't even hesitate. I said, "Well, I've got a buddy in in Auckland." go out let, let let him take you out he and his wife take you out man I, you don't even think about that stuff like it's it's so cool that my wife knows who kiwi is exactly right so i mean i love that i love that about who we are as tcks i love that about just this life we live right and and yet i struggle i hope i hope you know that like people like us we we do struggle it's it's not always fun and games but i wouldn't change it for the world you know, I, I've said that over and over. So, no, I agree with you totally. Yeah. Well, so, well, let's uh, let's transition then, because I uh, I know we kind of got a little deep there, and that's okay. I, I I'd rather get deep and 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 people reacting to the deep. I I don't know if you can see this on your screen, but we uh, a lot of people are chiming in right now, and so I just want you to know that they're they're loving that that you're on here right now. Every I even off the record, like even off I got messages like Roman Gradel, holy crap. I haven't talked to that guy forever. So that's great. Um, uh, but I want you to know that Debbie's chimed in, my brother's chimed in, Matt Tapley's chimed in. So yeah, uh, I can see it too. Yeah. Okay, good. So as long as you can see it, I just want to make sure I've got control over who gets on the screen, but uh okay. but either way. Uh let's talk uh let's completely shift now because usually the way this works is the half of the first half of the show, I want to talk TCK is because that's that's what we are and that's how you and I know each other. Uh, but then I want to get into to life now. Okay. So I uh, just so I'm understanding this right, and I want to kind of get back to it. But you are an animal trainer. You're a curator at a uh, an aquarium, things like that. How did how did Roman Gradel end up in that profession? Um, about a year after I came back. To, to Israel, my brother got a job. My brother was, was, he had his diving license already from Taiwan. I don't remember if, you remember David Tank? He yeah. Had, um, yeah, so he had a dive club. You saw me go like that though. I, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah shit went down. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, go so ahead. My brother was working and they needed, a, they were looking for someone else. I had just finished my, 
my diving certificate, and I started working half uh, half day at the aquarium. Uh, maintenance work, scrubbing walls, vacuuming, feeding the animals. And uh, this was back in 1995. And, uh, and since then, I've pretty much been there. I, I left for, for a year, a year and a half. I was working uh, underwater construction in uh, one of the ports up in uh, the middle of the country. And then uh, I left, when I came back to Eilat, there was a, a passenger submarine at the park where I work. And uh, I was working there as first as a diver, and then I did my uh, certificate, my uh, skipper's license, and then my commercial skipper's license, and then the license for the submarine. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was working there until they closed. I went traveling a bit to meet my dad, which I hadn't seen for 14 years. And then uh, I came back. So for the last, I think in, in, uh, in, in August, it's gonna be 25 years more or less on and off working for the same company. Uh, you, company. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you also train dogs too, right? It wasn't just about the... No. It, yeah. it, it's, uh, I, I was, when we moved to Spain, <clears throat> when I moved to, with my wife and I, uh, the, the project there kept me up uh, 18, 20 hours a day. Uh, but when things started balancing out and uh, I started having more time on my hands, I, I really wanted to study because that's something that I, I didn't do. I jumped right into work and I get each time I wanted to leave to go study, I kept getting promoted, which put things back. So here I finally was in a position where I could uh, take the time and start to learn. And uh, this, I guess it's a privilege that a 30 something year old has over a 18 year old. He, he actually gets to choose what he really, what really interests him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm learning that at 40, 44 yeah. right now. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I studied, one thing I studied was uh, religion because uh, I'm very interested in history and religion and uh, especially comparative religion. And wow. uh, you, you and my brother, you and my brother need to talk. I would love to talk to Jason. Yeah, yeah you, you guys would talk about like, yeah, get comfortable because you guys would be in it for a while. So go ahead. <laughs> so that's something I, I studied, and then uh, my love for for dogs. My, it's more than a love. It's uh, this I, I'm, this curiosity about about this relationship we have with a, with a different species. It's it just it 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 blows my mind. And uh, I had a chance. There was a a Norwegian dog trainer. She's uh, she's very famous here in, uh, in 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 Europe. Here, I mean, when I was living in Spain, and she was coming to Mallorca to to do a behavioral problem solving course. And I started with that, and I just kept taking more and more and more courses. Uh, so in the end, it was a di uh, you know training and psychology and obedience and uh, all kinds of things. And uh, when I came back to Elat, I on the side, I set up a, a little business, and I was primarily working with people who have uh, problems, uh, behavioral problems with their dogs, trying to help them. Uh, dog training, in the end of the day, is a, it's less training the dogs and more teaching the owners how to yeah. coexist with their with their family pet, right? And 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 that's something important. I want to say is that it's a uh, yeah. In the end of the day, dogs are part of the family, the part of the household, and if we want to have a healthy relationship with them, then uh, we need to. It's it's not enough just having dogs all your life. You, you need to to dig deep and and learn how they learn and how to get your point across and to 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 learn a little bit of of uh, of uh, of their language and how they are trying to express themselves. And it really changes changes people's lives, but uh, this relationship we have with dogs was is absolutely fascinating to me, and that's what really keeps me every once in a while do a small course, just to to dig a little bit deeper into it. You know, this uh, I think we we as a partnership between humans and dogs that we we haven't really reached uh, anywhere near our potential. You know, and just totally. so much so much we can do uh, and one th 
particular field I'm interested in is the is the detection, you know, and scent work with dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, when my brother was living in Eilat, he's a dog trainer. I mean, he studied also dog training, and we were trying to set up something with uh, with scent work uh, in in the in the in the field of of cancer. You know, it's lots of, lots of research going into that and. Uh, and there's a place in England called Medical Detection Dogs, and they're teaching dogs to to sniff out uh, different kinds of cancers, and and they do it in in seconds, and a 99% uh, uh, 99% of the time they they're, they're right, and uh, it's in it's not invasive, <laughs> and it's it's done in a complete completely peaceful way. And uh, I think uh, there's there's a lot to be actually there's there's a company in Israel which are trying to teach dogs to sniff out the the, the coronavirus. Oh so, really? Uh, once once you go deep into it, it's it's a field which is so deep and uh, it it truly fascinates me. It's really interesting. So apart okay. from from working with the animals that I work with in the aquarium, uh, dogs is really interesting to me something i would like to expand on in the future oh my bro uh, i don't even my my brother's probably like going ben ben say it say it uh okay so you know my mom obviously and, and she's got some health issues uh the reason i'm bringing this up is exactly what you just said uh people on here i, I don't think i'm rocking any bows especially with my mom but um about 15 years ago, which is which is crazy to think, maybe 12, 15, I, I can't remember. Uh, my mom was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Wow. Um, she's she's, you know, my mom, you know, and, and just like your mom, these are these are ladies who are stronger than you and I'll ever be, right? <laughs> so, um, uh, but the reason I bring this up is that you talked about dogs and sniffing out cancer. And, and for the record, those of you that are listening right now, Roman and I did not talk about this at all. This is this is a little bit of a freestyling. Um, but it's, it's ironic that you say that because my mom, the only reason we were able to get her into a doctor regarding her cancer. I used to have a dog. I know you're all going to be shocked about this. Uh, I'm a Guinness beer drinker and, and I named my my old dog Guinness. But every when I first moved back to Utah, and, and I'm not from here, but I, I lived here for for a lot of different reasons. But my mom wasn't feeling great, and and every time I go over to my my grandma's and my you know my mom was was there at the time. The dogs are amazing creatures. They they they're they're family, but they they know things that we'll never know. Their noses are bionic noses, right? You can relate to that, Roma. Um. Long story short, my my dog, the, the always, you know, the go-to was right before we were at my grandma's house and my mom was living there at the time. And my my dog would always go up and give my grandma a kiss and give my mom a kiss and then we go. It was just the way it was, right? So it's like a little kid, you know, you, you go say goodbye and they, they do their thing. They understood it. Well, I've never said this publicly, but like my mom, the dog Guinness ran over and he, and he sniffed my mom, went to give her a kiss. And he wouldn't let up. He kept sniffing like right here. And we kept thinking like, okay, to ship peanut butter on her, on her neck. Like what's going on? So didn't really think too much of it. Let it be. Um, but then we, uh, I would go back and say hi to my grandma. Hi to my mom. Same thing. Like, so we're, we're talking about a week where like he'd run up, give my grandma a quick kiss, run up, give my mom a quick kiss what we thought, but then he nip at her neck. And, and I've never, like I said, I've, ne I've never publicly said this. My brother knows, my mom knows, but uh, it was one of those weird things. Like he wouldn't let up. He wasn't hurting her. He, he wasn't biting. He wasn't doing anything else, but he wouldn't let go of like right, right here. Long story short, my mom, after, after Guinness doing that a couple of times, this is where Guinness is a badass. My dog, he, unfortunately he's no longer with us, but you get it. He, dogs are amazing. Uh, we have one here, and I was going to ask you about bicycles and all that, but that's we'll we'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, but Guinness Guinness kept nipping at my mom's neck, 
and I have I have somewhat of a medical background. I was a medic for for nine years when I wasn't teaching and, and whatnot. But Guinness kept nipping my mom's neck day after day after day, and it was one of those things like, what the hell is he doing? And so, long story short, he kept nipping, and my mom, you know, started to go like he kept nipping here, and then after a while, she realized she had some some lumps. Right in, right here, and it was one of those things. Like she asked me, you know, I wasn't a doctor. I'm not a doctor, things like that. But I was a medic, and I, you know, touched right here, and I could feel the lumps. And so we got her in a doctor. Long story short, I truly am convinced, and I think my mom would say this. I think my brother would say that. If my dad was still alive, he'd say this too. The only reason my mom is here today is because <laughs> that that dog, he sniffed out, and she went in. Not because I told her to. She not because my dad told her to. Not because my brother told her to. But she and this isn't a this isn't a fake story. It's just you know you and I are getting deep, so let's get deep, right? So, um, the only reason she even went in to get checked is because that damn dog would not every single night when it was time to say good night and say goodbye, he nipped at her neck. And my mom's still here because that damn dog, right? I love the guy to death. And, and if you all, Tim met him, a couple of people met him, but he lived for 15 years. But I am convinced that my mom is still on this planet because he was able to detect her cancer. Long story short, she ended up with Hodgkin's lymphoma because my dog kept snipping at her neck, nipping at her, not biting her, but nipping at her. And then she went and got checked and then, I think it was literally two weeks later she was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Amazing. Yeah. It's so, truly I mean, amazing. I've yeah. I've heard stories like this, like like this, I mean all the time, so many times. And even the lady who started up the medical uh, detection dog uh, in England has a very similar story and it's it's just amazing. I mean even for someone who who learns and you learn the, the 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 science behind why dogs and smell like they do and how they can do it. It still amazes me every time I hear something like that. And uh, and it's amazing well, that yeah 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 it, yeah. My wife and I have a have a, a four year old dog right now named Kayla, and she's she's awesome. I mean, she's I, she helped me get through Guinness's death and things like that. They got to meet each other, luckily, and and whatnot but she she's smart as hell too i mean they're so damn smart as you know i don't have to tell you that but they're so so damn smart now ironically my wife wanted me to ask you this because we're gonna we're gonna cheat a little and, and get some professional opinion but uh i run with my dog every day and, and we go far and far but what the hell like all of a sudden she hates people on bicycles tell me tell the people i don't know if this this uh you know, goes with everybody else who maybe experiences dog parenting, but like, what the hell is up with 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 bicycles and dogs? They they, they help. It, 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 it's uh, th there's a few things. Okay. The first thing I'm going to tell you is that I'm not going to solve your problem right now. <laughs> there's so many aspects as to why she she might be doing it now, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, one thing definitely, which dogs have and which they're born with, and which we we can't. Uh, we can't do anything about is their prey drive, right? Yeah. And they're, they're, they're born like that. Uh, dogs are descendants of wolves. And they, it's, it's a genetic imprint that things that move and move fast catch their attention. Okay. So if we get a, a dog that has uh, a strong prey drive and, uh, and uh, how can I say, it? a weak... Uh, a weak will, yeah, he's going to run yeah. after things that move. Yeah. Uh, what you need to do, or you or your wife or whoever's with the dog, when it starts yeah. happening, is to start uh, to see what triggers it, yeah? If it's bicycles with men on it, if it's bicycles with women on it, if it's red bicycles, try to see, to be observant about what kind of bicycles she's running after. When she first starts noticing it and starts... Uh, being drawn into the the movement of the bicycle. It's, it's usually when we're running. She and I jog a lot, so she that's usually when she goes ape shit. So <laughs> most important, yeah. and this is something that we overlook time and time and time again, is 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 what your reaction is to to when she does it, because dogs like some like all mammals, and it's we we are 
built the same way is we don't yeah. do anything for nothing, right? Uh, mo everything we do, we expect something back. And uh, I'm sure you've noticed this if you've grown up with dogs is that uh, they always want to please you. Yeah. They're always looking for reward to what they're doing from the person that is most important to them in their life, and that's you. So you need to watch your reaction because even if you react or, or, or say anything in the slightest, immediately after she barks at the, at the bike going by, in her mind, you are reinforcing her behavior. Yeah. Yeah. So True. this is the, the old school method and the new school method, right? We got the old school method where you need to punish unwanted behavior and reinforce wanted behavior. And the new school takes it a bit further and says that, that we don't want to put the dog in a situation that he's being punished because if he does, learning becomes much slower, right? And that makes sense. I have kids and it, it's exactly the same. <laughs> if, you want your, if you want your kid to, to learn maths, to do his homework, then if you punish him, the more you punish him, the less he wants to do it. If yeah. you're creative and put a little bit more effort into to trying to make something interesting out of it, he'll 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 be begging you to do his homework. And the same same with behavior problems with dogs, right? We, we need to we need to look at how we react. And so what I suggest to you is to to and, and this is a tough one when I tell people this, they usually they give me this this smirk of uh, this guy doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> but totally yeah. ignore. Totally ignore. And if you're around small kids, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. My daughter, when she was young and really small, if I didn't pay attention to her, she'd do anything to get my attention. Yeah. And and even if I scolded her for her, I remember scolding her, and she's sitting there with a little smirk on her face and smile, and she's like, yes, I got what I wanted, you know? And it's the same with dogs. So absolutely ignore. If you need to take a second, stop running. Don't look at her. Let the, let the situation pass, and then keep going. And if you do it time and time again, maybe it will work. And if it doesn't, then you need to take it a step further. And uh, did, you, did you train her at all? Yeah. A little bit. So she's she's great. No, she's a great dog. It's just all of a sudden out of nowhere, like she hates bicycles or motorcycles or anything on two wheels. Something happened, you know, it's enough for a dog to experience something which we, we, we totally didn't pay attention to. You know, it could be uh, just for example, yeah, a bike went by and a firecracker exploded the 20 yeah, miles she off. She hates firecrackers too. And so you didn't even hear it. And she, she puts the two things together and that's it. That's yeah. enough for her. Every time she sees a dog, she, she freaks out, right? Yeah. So that's why I said I'm not going to solve your problem because I, I don't know what's going on there, right? Yeah. But uh, basic training always helps, not because of the, the actual training, but what I always tell people is, is and this is the beauty of about about dog training is it's not about the training it doesn't matter in the end of the day if she sits dog training is two things one uh, bond building between you and the dog and learning each other's language if you want her to do something you need to learn ways of telling her how to do it now obviously you don't speak dog and she doesn't speak human so you dog training is exactly that you know uh. No, that's awesome. That's that's good advice. I'll 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 think about that the next time we I run with her. But yeah, she's a badass. Aside from that, like she's been great. Nothing, nothing, no complaints at all. But all of a sudden, she hates bicycles, and she I usually put her like obviously I I run with her and I I kind of I wrap the waist, and so she has a little bit more freedom. But yeah, she she takes off after bicycles and motorcycles. But maybe that's just a the thing. So. You can try socializing her to, to bicycles and motorcycles too. But again, it all depends on how much time and effort you, you put into it, you know. But yeah. it's, it's definitely something. I can send you links of trainers that do it wonderfully. And uh, obviously, I, I'm a no harm, you know, positive reinforcement. I don't believe in uh, forcing. Oh, yeah, anything, totally. But, but I'm with there you. are certainly ways. Again, if you have time, and I think now you do, uh, <laughs> yeah. How many bicycles are around? But you can yeah. ask a friend to help you out with a bicycle, and uh, 
uh, off camera, I can, I can we can go into details, but totally. it's it's totally a problem. It's totally a problem which which is very very solvable. That's awesome, man. And I appreciate that. Like, I, I think I speak for a couple of people here and, and I love dogs more than I like people majority of the time. So <laughs> I appreciate honest, that. Cause they're totally yeah. honest. Oh, they're unconditional. They're honest and they're unconditional. Right. So it's, it, that's there's awesome. That, there's a famous cartoon of, of a, a kid and a dog or a, a person and a dog. And they're mm -hmm. sitting on this pier overlooking a picturesque lake with, with in the mountains. And then you see what the person is thinking about, and he's thinking about I don't know a cake and the house and the car and the, all these things. And the dog is, is sitting there, and it's got the exact same picture, but just in small. He's he's living the moment, you know, and 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 that's that's that's, that's awesome. Sums it up because they're so honest and they're so open. And if you give them a finger, they'll give you a hand. And uh, no, I. It's I don't, I don't do what you do, but I, I mean, ask my brother, ask my mom from the time I was a little guy. I mean, that's, I've always loved dogs. So there's always been a dog in the picture. So I appreciate that. That was, that was free advice. I didn't even have to pay for that. So I <laughs> appreciate that. Um, we're going to, we're going to transition because we're over an hour and that's, I told you we'd probably be about an hour, but I, I'm sorry, man. I, I love talking to you. It's been a no, while. So yep. if you don't, if you don't have to be anywhere, I don't have to be anywhere. So I hope we can keep going. Is that cool? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Kids are asleep. I'm, <laughs> that's right. I'm free. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's, uh, let's get into your music because, uh, the people that know you the way I know you, uh, you've, you, this is a passion of yours. I mean, I, I remember going up to Ramon Gradel's house. I didn't know crap about music. I mean, I played the sax, did the, the school thing, all that stuff. But when I think of you, the number one thing that pops in my head is how talented you've always been in terms of music. And in terms of, I remember going up to your house and, and playing. I was sitting behind playing the drum set while you were playing the the bass of the guitar. I can't remember. We had remember that remember that band we had together that was Flashback, like in of seventh course. grade. Of course, with the Sherry Sherry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It yeah. was. Uh, but but I just remember. I mean, this is how far back music has been a part of who you are, obviously. But like when I think of Roman Gradel, I think music guy. Um, you're a talent and I'm jealous because first of all, Emily's em, my father-in-law play. I wish you two could meet cause he, he, he can play the guitar. He can play anything with strings. Like there's no tomorrow. So, and every time I go over there, he's like, you ready for a lesson? I'm like, Oh crap. Like <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, but, but I have a guitar. I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying one of these days, uh, hopefully get to be at least on your level. If not, you know, um, you're, you're making me blush here, bro. You're th this is this is like, look, I was gonna get into this later, but like, we'll, we'll talk about creative outlets and things like that. But I, I know you, I mean, I like to think I still know you, even though it's been 20 years. When I think of Roman Gradel, his creative outlet is music, and, and that's a that's a passion and, and and awesomeness that I only wish to get to somewhat of a level you're at now i'm never going to say like the level you're at but um i'm going to play in just a bit because i know there's a lot more people watching and there'll be there'll be people watching this in the replay but we're gonna we're gonna play some of your songs on this i i, I made that a, a primary uh thing for this episode because i want people to hear how talented you are um but where did that passion come from? Where where did you where did music like truly influence you? Where did that passion? I mean, were you born with it? Was it something as a young guy, even before Taiwan days? Was it instilled in you? Where did that passion of of music and and your talent truly come from? Um, you're really making me blush. It's all right. Uh, you deserve yeah. it. You deserve it, man. And I know I'm not the only one that says that about you. You're you're yeah. a talent, bro. Uh, I, I always wanted to play the guitar. Uh, I even I remember when I was very very young. Uh, we were living in Switzerland, mm -hmm. uh, and I asked my mom. I told her I wanted to play to learn the guitar. Uh, from any wanting to 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 be a musician, because. Uh, uh, she she made me learn the banjo instead of the guitar. Really? Because that's okay. 
Okay, I don't know shit about shit, but like, isn't the banjo a lot harder? Well, we'll get into that. Okay, I was go like, ahead. No, what, you. You know? so I'm talking about the guitar, and she said, "No, you have to learn something." Uh, everyone plays the guitar. You, my brother, learned sax, the saxophone, and hey, and that was me. You, if you have... remember that was me? I was a sax guy. <laughs> And uh, and you have to learn the banjo somewhere. We 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 agreed in between, and uh, at least she let me. She bought me a six string banjo, and sent me to 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 town to take music lessons with her teacher in this big music school in Switzerland. And uh, everyone thinks Switzerland is really beautiful, but they have a lot of old buildings which remind you of Nazi Germany. And this was one of those buildings, big gray, and. Uh, and her teacher was the absolute, I mean, she could have easily been one of Hitler's uh, lieutenants. Yeah. And there I was learning how to play the banjo. And yeah. uh, uh, it lasted for a while, but it, I got the chords down and I, I, I learned a little, the, base, the basics of, of, of music. It, it didn't last very long, but when we moved to Taiwan, I think that's where, that's where it kind of, I picked it up again. Uh, not the banjo, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I don't remember you playing the banjo. So does I, Debbie. I, I, if you I, look down below, like Debbie doesn't yeah, remember that either. Yeah. Not many people know. I, I have. Yeah. If you have time for a little story, I have tra a traumatic experience with the banjo, which, uh, like I said, it, it should have derailed me from any any music uh, in the future. But once a year, uh, the school that uh, I was learning had a, a big ensemble. I think it was Christmas time, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, and 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 I was I was I was hating it. I knew it was coming. And uh, is this before Taiwan? This was before Taiwan. This was in okay. Switzerland. Okay. And uh, so the day arrives, and I know that I have to. Me and three hundred other kids have this musical uh, assembly, and. Uh, and I'm I'm begging my mom because I am half Swiss and I have this issue with being on time, to be on time. <laughs> I want to be early. I want to be early. I want to be early. Uh, she's not Swiss, and and we ended up being late. And I ended up being the last one there. And not enough. It's not enough that I'm the the only. I mentioned this before. The the brown, you know, chocolate Jew. <laughs> which makes me I, I'm also carrying this weird instrument that no one knows what it is yeah. and uh, and I'm sitting in the middle of the middle like there were five rows and I'm, I'm in row number three in the middle of row number three and there's 300 kids there and I'm passing each kid you know clonking their instruments and they have to get up and the guy with the tambourine is almost falling over and everything so I came out of that that night completely traumatized why the banjo why the banjo? And I don't know. She she liked the banjo, and uh, and she made me do it. But when That's we awesome. got to Taiwan, I I think uh, Mike he put put me onto ACDC, and I I heard uh, real guitar playing. I mean, he talked to he talked to my soul, and uh, my dad bought me an electric guitar. I think I had a drum set too for a while. You did. I played your drum set in, in your Taiwan home. Up in Yamingshan, probably. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, and uh, and and that's and then I met Sean Mahan, and, and Aaron's brother. Aaron's brother. Yeah, and I think uh, yeah, we had the flashback group. Yeah, we <laughs> were badass. We, we had bad another ass. group with 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 Jason. He played bass. Uh huh. And Sean, I think it was Sean McKeon on the drums. Probably. So and John's on this right now. He's listening yeah. in, so hopefully he can chime in. So. I remember jamming at his house with your brother. That's for sure. I remember jamming with you. Don't don't tell me short. Come on now. Uh, you you were you were the singer. I was. Yeah, I was. I won't and, sing right now, but yeah, I was. But yeah, it, it was always a part. And 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 by the time I was, I think a junior, right? We had the the Jesus Babies, which was. Yeah. Talking about creative outlets, I mean that was that was already a band where we were writing our own music, and uh, and uh, for a bunch of 16, 17 year olds, the it was it was pretty it was pretty good, you know. I remember all the yeah all the songs. I some of the songs I sent you were were 
yeah. the Jesus Baby songs. I don't know if you noticed them or remembered them, but yeah. Yas, oh, when we first met Yas, I mean, what a talent yeah. to see. Jesus Christ. You know, Sean had the, the creative talent, and Yas, what a guitar player. I mean, just amazing. And Sean on the drums, it was it was absolutely, absolutely and every, and, and I could be totally wrong on this. My brother included in Yaz and Sean McKeon, they'll never admit it. But yeah, I mean, that they loved every minute of that. Like, they, but you were the rock. You were the guy that got things going. So I'm not sure about that, but, but we were. You were. I You're very know. humble. You're very humble, brother. You always were back in, in the TS days, too. So <laughs> I. I get that. Um, well, I want to. I want to. I want to step back a second. This is something I've never done because it's going to transition. It's not just about your music, because I know. I think it's fair to say we're gonna we're gonna move into our dads, and and I want to get to that in a second. I'm hoping this picks up. Um, but about I don't know, six months ago, you and I started talking um, in terms of our dads. But one and and I'm not jumping right there just yet. But I want to I want to jump to some music, and I want people to hear this. And I, and I've got to get on my phone and for for them to hear it. So hold on one second. Okay. Uh, of course, my my phone's it picks up my face, but it's not recognizing me now. And if you can look, Sean Mahan or Sean McKeon talking about the drummer. My brother's chiming in. Hold on one second. Um, do you remember Andrew Thomas? Yeah. How about that guy? Because he was part of Flashback. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Those are, yeah. I, I always, I always wonder, what, like those kind of guys, like what happened to them, where they ended up. Definitely. Okay, so I'm going to play this right now. It is the song called Heal. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you wrote, produced, sang. I I mean, you did everything with the song. I could be totally wrong, but I think that's what... No, it, it's, it's, you, you, I think you make it sound more than, than it is. I, 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 have, I have a recording platform on my computer, and uh, I was lucky enough that I, I learned to play different instruments, so... Apart from the drums, which are programmed, I, uh, I I play everything and I sing. Well, I attempt to sing. I, I never yeah, claim. Bro, that. you can sing. You can I, sing I, way better I, than I can. I was never a singer. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the idea of all these songs was just to to, to put it down, you know. It's uh, things in your mind and, and you want to you wanna put them down so they're not forgotten. And I really started enjoying myself doing it. So, yeah, it's just so me you, and, uh, just so, but then having said that, though, you you basically did this entire song, right? The the song "Heal." Oh yeah, all the songs. I it's 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 only me, and and apart from the Jesus Baby songs, I I write it, I write, and I dude, and record. Let me let me let me let me play this song, and I want people to hear it because this is called "Heal." It's about your relationship with your father, and and right. you and I. Off, off this, obviously, off this site. You, about six months ago, you and I kind of bonded, bro. And it was, it was an important thing for me to get back in touch with you because of this and what you said about my writing and things like that. But let's let's get to that in a second. I want people to hear this, so we're gonna go no interview for a second. I just want people to hear the song. Okay. You hear it? Yep. This is Roman Goodell. Every part of it's Roman Goodell. Right through. 
to stop that but I, I want people to know that every every song that you've sent me brother uh i'm gonna post on my ben there.com or excuse me ben there.org when uh we're done with this that one uh i hope it's okay that we get into this you and i talked about this prior to going on you and i uh and, and my brother and your brother and tim and, and we're just at that age man we're we're We've all lost our dads. It's it's kind of a weird thing. It's, it's not even just us. It's it's my my buddies in Idaho. Uh, Chris Woodison, I don't know if you're listening. Jason Geyser, I don't know if you're listening. Um, but it's it's kind of a weird thing that when you and I started talking about um, getting back in touch with each other, I, I think I should say mm-hmm. about about a year. Well, six months ago, I think that's fair to say, right? When I when I yep. well, probably mm-hmm. more than that. Shit, we're coming up on a, probably a year um, because I I wrote that. You talked about your creative outlets. Okay, let's let's step back to move forward. My personally, as you remember, I you know I, I love sports. I, I still love sports. I I wrote when I was in college. I wrote for the the school paper, and I was the sports editor. Blah blah blah. What got me kind of going again, and I, I give a lot of credit to my wife who pushed me and challenged me to start writing again because that was a way I could. I could process losing my dad, right? I mean, I lost my dad in 2011. Uh, my brother, same thing. Uh, it was traumatic. I mean, I, there's no way around it. When you're, when, especially when you're a guy, your dad is 10 feet tall and bulletproof. No matter what, the crap that you've been through with your dad, um, the 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 frustrations, the acceptance, that you name it, you always wanted to kind of be like him in, in some twisted, weird way. But you and I have been through that. And, uh, you know, that's just another thing that, that our kinship, man, it, it, I get it. I, I didn't know your dad that well. Uh, you knew my, you knew my dad a little bit. I hope I'm not, you, you know, touching on any, I guess what I'm trying to say is I, I guess I'm not hoping, hoping I, I'm not opening up any old wounds, but, no. um, you know, losing my, you knew my dad, uh, you, yeah. you definitely stayed in my house as a kid and, and, and whatnot, but when you and I started talking off the record and this has nothing to do with you and I right now, the reason I felt comfortable in writing and, and, and I didn't really, to be honest, I didn't give a shit who was listening. You know, I didn't give a shit who was right, who was reading. It was more my come to terms with 
the acceptance of my dad not being around anymore. And, and, and those of us that have been through it, it sucks. There's just no way around it. Whether no matter the, the relationship you have with your dad, um, but you and I started talking and, and, and one of the things that's on my blog, again, I, I hate to be the, the ass it's like, go to benthere.org. But one thing that I always admired is you and I were able to reconnect that way. It's a mm. shitty thing to, to reconnect on. Right. But um, it's not coronavirus. It's, uh, <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, no. This is way, this is way before Corona, but you and I connected. Definitely. Um, you lost your pops. I lost my pops, my brother, you know, your brother. I was able to write a little bit of, a, you know, a story about my dad on the blog and whatnot. And, and I'm so proud and honored that you, when we connected, I was able to put that song as part of my tribute to my dad. It, it wasn't the same story you went through. You didn't go through the same story I went through and yet we went through it together. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, in terms of that, you know, the, the song heal, it, it you know, and I'm going to post this again. I, I want people to know right now. I know we, we only shared a little bit from the intro song to heal. And, and, and I'm going to do another song before we leave because it's just badass. Roman's a badass. Um, but I, I truly, there's no, unless you've lived it, it's hard to understand, but, and I'm by no means trying to, to light, you know, make light of it, but, the song Heal, how did that come about, Roman? Um, <clears throat> my 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 father's passing was uh, was was especially hard on me because uh, uh, like I said, we, we, we didn't see each other, we didn't talk to each other for, for 14 years. And um, and one day I I I got my shit together. And I went to see him. He was living in Thailand at the time. And uh, and I was expecting a visit where I would come clean with what I feel about the man that abandoned his kids and his wife and and and, and give him a, a mouthful. And and what happened was that we spent two months together and we I remember saying to him that I enjoyed it so much that even if he wasn't my father. I felt like I made a friend for life. We were together 24 hours a day for two months. And, uh, and actually the first line of that song, uh, conversations, meet the morning light, ash ashtrays full. We talked right through the night. It was, it, it, it's something that happened night after night. We would sit outside of his bungalow and talk and talk and talk. And we had 14 years to make up for and uh, and we just had uh, we re reconnected so deeply that made <laughs> that made it even worse when when he passed away, you know. Because uh, I remember thinking to myself when he when he when he died was that you know you have these selfish so thoughts sometimes, and you're like, I wish I didn't reconnect with him because then then I wouldn't have given a shit, you know. Uh, but we didn't just reconnect. We were so close and we had so many things in common and he became my rock and my anchor in more ways than I can describe. Uh, uh, the thing is that uh, one day he started talking really weird things of, yeah, when I leave and this and that, and uh, I booked a ticket and I went to see him and I, I asked him, you know, what's up? What's, what's going on? Are you... <laughs> And he said, no, I'm just, uh, he was very independent, very, very independent. And he said, I'm, I'm getting older. He was only 67, yeah, but I'm getting older. And, my dad was 63. Uh, my brother's dad, my, yeah, ours was 63. So go ahead. So yeah, young, but he was already thinking ahead and being on his own, living in Thailand. Uh, he said that he's, uh, he's not planning on, on, on coming to a point where anyone needs to take care of him. Uh, that would be the worst for him. And we were talking, and uh, and and actually, I don't talk about this very often. But the the last night that we were together, we were traveling Cambodia. He had uh, discovered Cambodia and fell in love with it. And I was uh, the day after. I was about to. I was I was going to fly back to Israel, and he was going to move on to Vietnam. 
uh, we were having dinner, and after dinner, we went to the pub to have a beer. He said, one last beer. We'll have an early night. And uh, I think he had three sips of his beer, and his head went down, and uh, he suffered a stroke. And uh, You were there. You were there when that happened. I was there when it happened. And we were in uh, Siem Reap, which is in uh, North Cambodia. And and what the hell am I supposed to do now, you know? My, my dad just had a stroke. And uh, and uh, so my brother flew over, and we were together for a while. And in the end, they put him in a, in a place where they looked after him until a year and a half later when he died from from complications from having the 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 stroke and uh you said you said it sucks and losing your father sucks big time but having to go on with your life i was living in spain and i was just moving to back to israel and having to le leave him there because he can't fly and uh, and i can't take care of him and uh, and he didn't have insurance, and we didn't have money to put him in a in a in a really a place that we 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 would have wanted to put him, and and the slow deterioration of this man, like you said, you know, ten feet tall. Uh, my my dad weighed forty two kilos when he passed away. He was just a, a wow. slither of a man. He had a hole in his throat. He couldn't speak. Uh, he couldn't breathe properly. Uh, and add to the fact that you're thousands of miles away, uh, that was really tough. And this, the feeling of, of uh, feeling guilty about not getting him to the hospital on time when he had the stroke and uh, saying to yourself, why did I have to? We should have gone back to Phnom Penh. At least it would have been a, a normal hospital. There are all these thoughts, millions of thoughts in your mind, you know? And then not, there was no funeral. He passed away, and uh, they cremated him, and they 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 threw his ashes in the sea. And th there's 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 not even a gra a gravestone, a grave that you can go to and 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 cry to. And I carried this with me until I wrote that song. And that song to me, and I I've, we've talked about this, we've I've mentioned it before. It really really helped me. Uh, and I know you know what I'm talking about because it's 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 a kind of writing. It's 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 writing down the words and putting it uh, onto music that's been you know it's like a, a record player in my head. That's how the songs start with me. It's just this, this the melody going through and through and through and through. Uh, I finished recording it. I listened back to it. And and I, I immediately I immediately knew that I was in a different place, uh, emotionally, uh, relating to my my father's passing. And uh, yeah, that's the story behind the song. I uh, I wish I didn't I I couldn't relate, but I I, I relate to a T, brother. My dad was cremated too. Jason, my brother Jason's dad was cremated too. So my mom's got him up at her. Uh, her apartment but yeah it's uh you, you know it's coming you know whether you're 20 30 40 50 you know it's at some point that's going to come but you're never really ready for it no and i think that's something those of you that out there that are listening that knew my dad jason's dad my brother's dad uh roman's dad i mean it doesn't matter tim's dad i mean this is these guys were good dudes they they had their faults I'll be openly, you know, accepting of that, but, uh, they're human. You know, they're human. And I think you and I, wow, man, it's, you said you get emotional here. This is the first time in five episodes I've gotten emotional. <laughs> so good job, brother. Um, but they're human. And I think sadly you realize that more after the facts, right? Um, Definitely. and, and yet we love them and yet we're angry and yet it's life. And yet they gave us a life that allowed us to be in this situation. I mean, you and I, you're in Israel. I'm sitting here in, in Utah. I'm, I'm not from here. My wife's from here, but I've got some connections here. It doesn't matter. Without my dad, obviously our moms too, but without our dads, 
we never would be connecting right now. We never would be allowed to have this opportunity. And um, I, I want you to know my, we, we talked about, you know, I may have said this already, but like growing up, I always thought sports was my connection to my outlet, my, my passion, my whatever, but you know, life changes, people change, you know, time moves on. We get older, right? My, my body isn't a, a 20 year old body anymore. And, and sports isn't who I am anymore. You know, I, mm-hmm. obviously if you look in the background, I, I totally, uh, you still have a man cave and it's all sports driven, but realistically these days it's about writing. It's about coming to terms with who I am, who you are, uh, accepting our, our dads and, and who they were to us. And, 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 you know, it's a deep process. And, and those of you that still have your parents, hang on to it with every minute you have, because you never know. Uh, Roman, I'm, I'm sure you, you give anything to, to kind of, you know, have one more conversation. Right. And that's why, um, Absolutely. I, th- I think you and I connected. We, we, you and I talked about this about six months ago, and that's one thing that was a priority. When I heard that song, you sent me that song, and I want people to truly know this. I thought, I thought for a long time, and, and that's fine. We're getting emotional here, and that's cool. And, and but, but I thought I, my brother and I, you know, I, I speak for him a little bit, but I never, never thought it would happen. I don't know why like dads are 10 feet tall and bulletproof, right? That you never think it's going to truly happen. And no matter what kind of relationship you have with your parents or you specifically, if you're a guy with your father, you always think they're going to be there. And and I hope not to sound too deep, but I just, those of you that are listening right now, if you still got your parents, call them, talk to them, hug them because you just never know. And when Roman sent me that song, the heel song, I had already written that little, uh, you know, blog about my dad and, and those, you know, again, you can go read it at, at been there.org, but I actually wrote that on my honeymoon. My wife and I were in Italy, which is kind of funny. Um, because we were just thinking about how it, it, it's kind of ironic how life puts you in certain situations, you know, and we were in Italy. It was kind of our honeymoon was winding down and we were sitting in a cafe and, and she knew, she was reading a book and I thought, you know, I need to start writing again. And it'd been a while. And I just remember sitting there thinking like, I'm here. I am smack in the middle. Here's a, here's an American born Asian raised American, whatever I am. Right. So sitting in a cafe in, uh, in Italy and, you know, not a lot of people, probably could relate to that but it was it was my story and i was loving it i'm looking at my wife going like thank god i i was lucky enough to to marry someone who wasn't afraid to explore the world with me and as i'm sure you can relate to but it was just a situation that who do i thank for this like if if i would have stayed in the states and grown up in the states that would have been a great life i would have i would have you know, live the, the lifestyle that majority of the people I know here in the States do. And that's awesome. There's nothing wrong with that. Just in like in Israel, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, if you would have moved to Switzerland, there's nothing wrong with that. I want to be very careful in how I, how I say this, but I remember truly sitting there. My wife and I were winding down our honeymoon and we were sitting in Italy. Uh, we actually went up, uh, we, we were in, different parts of Italy all over, but our, our last couple um, nights there, we, we spent in Italy. And I remember sitting there going like, would I truly have been this guy that wanted to see the world? I'd been to Europe a couple of times. I went by myself, and, you know, ironically Italy again, but it, it gave me such a moment of thankfulness. And, it, and I'm sure, you know, whatever connection you had with your dad, I, I, I know, uh, you weren't close and then you were close. And I mean, with that, with all due respect, but because of them, we got put in the position we were in because of that. You and I are sitting here talking because of that. You and I are able to go on zoom and talk to people all over the the world. Right. So, um, Hmm. it sucks. And yet how, how thankful am I? And I'm sure you can relate to this. How, how thankful of a life we got to see, we got to see the world at such a young age, man. We got to experience culture at such a young age. I mean, there's people that, that, that truly wake up every morning wishing, especially right now, because nobody can go anywhere. 
but there are people that that truly wish they had what you and i have that's in our dna that's who you and i are i haven't seen you in 20 years and i feel like i talked to you yesterday right and so i truly think you know honestly in the core of me and i'll get off on this tangent in a second but and i think you can relate to this and i think most people listening can because of who our parents were and the, the risks they were willing to take and, and the opportunities they were willing to take allowed us to be in this position and i've never forgotten that and and when you're when i heard your song heal i haven't told you this maybe i alluded to it but i haven't told you this truly but i heard that song i heard my dad <laughs> i heard <laughs> here we go right so uh I want you to know because i know i'm not the only one but i hope hopefully a lot of people can hear your song but that song struck a nerve brother and uh i know it was about your dad but it 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 hit home in a lot of ways that i don't i I don't want you to know or forget that that like that's truly a song that 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 hit home with a lot of us who have lost our dad so i appreciate and love you for that so that was a beautiful song and and i'm going to keep playing it it's uh it's available on my my uh been there.org um blog so anyway long story short i don't want to get too too emotional i've already done that but thank you thank you thank you, thank you for you brother so uh it means a lot to me that 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 it struck out that that way yeah more than you'll ever know and i and i i tried to write about it but when i heard that song it was like i was listening to my story you know, my dad and I were close, and yet there were frustrations. There were there were things, you know, as as every young man and 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 whatnot experiences with their dad. But I just want you to know that whatever you were going through, you opened up a lot of eyes and ears and and, and people related to it. So keep that music coming, brother, because I'm I'm gonna post. You sent me about five six songs, um, more than just heal, but. Uh, I want people to know that Roman's gift. I mean, he's, he's a multi-talented guy, but Roman's gift. Once you hear these songs, if, if there's nothing negative to say, I mean, they're just, they strike a nerve and it's not just a, it's not just a, a TCK thing. It's, it's a humanistic thing. And I, I truly respect the hell out of you and, and, and jealous of you. Cause I can barely, hell, I can barely play. My, my wife's dad is a, my father-in-law is a musician too, and he's always trying to get me to play the guitar. And I've got a guitar right here. I don't even know if you can see it, but <laughs> yep. there it is right there. Yeah. It's sat there for about, I don't know, six months. And I'm trying to, to get the courage to, to actually play it, but what you're doing. Late. Right. And you, and you and I have talked about that. It's never too late. And that's what this, this whole show's about, man. It's TCKs, but it's a humanistic show. And I, and I want people to know that um, I know I'm talking a lot right now, but no, um okay. i i truly respect you i've respected the hell out of you and i know i'm not alone in saying that so keep Thank doing you. what you're doing i know you you and i've talked off the record that you took some time off um from your music and and, and from playing and, and writing and, and doing all that but this world needs more roman Gradels, brother we we need more we need we need more people that are there that are willing to uh represent what we're going through um Thank Sean, you. you you know tim and, and all those other it's it's crazy to think so many of us were at that age sean and sean brought it up the other day but we're at the age our parents were when we were in taiwan which is insane to think because i remember going to my parents 40th birthday and here we are i'm, I'm blinking and i'm 44 so it's like it's amazing to think that yeah amazing. yeah so yeah so i mean it's uh long story short and, and we're coming up on the, on the two hours thing and i and i don't you know, want to stop talking to you just because, you know, you are who you are and I am who I am. But um, thank you. I guess I speak on behalf of everybody. Thank you for what you do, brother. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ben. You flatter me, really. No, you, you and I, <laughs> you and I are emotional guys and that's okay. It's, 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 uh, it is what it is, brother, but it's, it's almost cleansing that you can understand. I mean, here we are thousands of miles away, right? And yet you went through the same thing I did. You went through the same thing my brother did. Um, yeah, definitely. 
He went through the same thing Tim Wenger did. I mean, it's it sucks, but there's something so profound and powerful that here we all here we are all going through this. And you wrote a song, music is powerful. I mean, music connects the world, right? And I know you probably think it's just oh, it's some song, but like your songs, and I, I truly want to let people know once you and I hang up, I am gonna post all those songs that you sent to me. Uh, they're going to be on my website, benthere.org. And I want people to listen because it's not just about the passing of fathers. It's life songs and it's Roman Grudel. It's people in Canada. It's people in Paris. It's people in the States. It's This world's a lot smaller than you think it is. And, and, I, and Roman brings that out in his music. It's so relatable no matter who you are and where you're at. So um, I just want people to know that. So sorry I talked, I talked about no, this. No. Okay, thank so, you. Thank you. Uh, well, the, the thing about this is I, I get the luxury of being it's my show. I, I get the luxury of having people on that have influenced me and, and made me a better person. And whether you realize it or not, brother, you, you've done that, you know? So thank you, Ben. I got um, you. So let's, uh, now that we're on two hours, exactly. Let's, uh, make this a little bit of a lighter note. Uh, quarantine life. How is it? How is it in Israel? Like, what what's the status quo with Israel in terms of quarantine and this coronavirus crap that's going on? So, what are you guys up to? Uh, the country's closed. Nothing. Nothing's open today. They started reopening uh, essential stores and uh, a few other stores. Uh, restaurants are still closed. Uh, you're allowed to go out only to to do what you need to do and come back home, but uh, for a month, for over a month, it was completely closed. I was lucky enough to again, uh, animals need to eat; they need to be taken care of. Uh, what kind of animals, by the way, just so the people know, like what exactly is that your uh, your aquarium? We, uh, our parent company is called Coral World. We, we specialize in corals. We've had corals. Uh, for over 25 years, but we have uh, tropical fish. Uh, we have uh, hawksbill turtles. Uh, we have green turtles. We have sharks, uh, rays. So your typical aquarium. Uh, we've had. Uh, we do a lot of work with the community, uh, with school kids. Uh, we had a, a, a hawksbill turtle breeding program. We are the only ones in the world who reproduced oh. and set them free. Uh, so, yeah, that's the... Are you guys still open? I'm, I'm assuming the aquarium is not open, or is it...? The aquarium's closed. Okay. Uh, the team, we're 12 people. We split into two. Uh, we haven't come in contact with the other, with the other team. Uh, and we work three days on, three days off, uh, so that uh, we can do the basics of what the animals need and uh, in case something happens and somebody gets infected you always have half a team that can uh, continue working because because uh, the animals obviously need uh, yeah totally taken care of yeah. what's uh how's your family doing through this how are your kids how's your wife all the quarantine stuff how, what's their day-to-day -day? they're at home uh, my wife went to the doctor today, so that's the first time she <laughs> went out. Yeah. She had to, she had a doctor's appointment, but the kids have been home. Uh, people in Israel are complaining, but I think the the the, the Ministry of uh, Education did an excellent job. The I think it was the third or fourth day into the quarantine, uh, into the lockdown, they were already there. There's about 25 TV channels for each grade and each subject. And uh, they've been studying from on the internet. They have uh, three, on average, three Zoom classes a day. I mean, they've, they've been doing a lot of studying. Uh, but still, you're stuck at home, you know? So the kids want to kill each other. <laughs> mom wants to kill them and then she wants to kill you because you were out three days and then you go it's it's not easy for anyone it's not easy yeah. for anyone that yeah. sounds sounds vaguely familiar here so it's it's, uh, it's pretty much the same everywhere except yeah. for our friends in taiwan who 
who like everything in Taiwan, they do it so good, you know? Yeah, well, Taiwan jumped on the boat, so did Singapore and so did Hong Kong. Yeah. I mean, they, they got right on it. So I think that that played a big yeah. part. So, yeah. What uh, are you guys uh, able to binge on anything? Or, I don't know. I mean, I've never been to Israel, but like concept in terms of like Netflix and things like that, are you guys able to watch any additional shows that you probably wouldn't have watched? Or what are you, what are you binging on? Or how do you get through the day? Uh, well, we help the kids with the, with the studies. Yeah. And then, yeah, I think my wife got into into a show that she's like watching episode after episode. I watched, uh, yeah, of course. There's a few shows that yeah. that you get hooked on, and that you 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 realize it's three and a half in the morning and you're still watching. <laughs> yep, and, uh, I know. I, I get that. We have a daily movie where the kids get to choose from Netflix what they want to see. Uh, my 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 we have i'm lucky that i have a yard so uh, my son is a uh, big into 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 soccer or football as i should say uh you goalie weren't you a goalie growing up i, I was a goalie yeah 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 is he so a goalie when, huh is he a goalie your son he was until he found out how good it feels to score <laughs> so <he's laughs> yeah anymore. so yeah he's a uh, He's a forward. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, hey, uh, we're actually at the last question. Uh, and and I, I could talk to you for hours, brother. Uh, yeah. But having said that, uh, in terms – I'm sure you've watched. You, you saw Camille's last week. You saw Sean's. You saw Calvin's and Tim's and whatnot. But my last question is always uh, whether you're a drinker or not, you could, you could, you could take out the beer factor. You could implement whatever – if you could sit down and have a beer and just chat the shit, you know, with, with anybody, uh, I think I have a feeling of what you're going to say, but I, I don't want to hear from your words. I mean, uh, but if you could sit down and have a, a beer with anybody either alive or no longer with us and just shit, shoot the shit, uh, who would it be? Without a doubt, it would be my, my dad. Yeah. Uh, we, we, Again, he was an expat in Thailand. Uh, we drank a lot of beer. Yeah. We had uh, we had conversations that that uh, that took me to to places where I didn't even think were were possible. And uh, I definitely miss it. And I I definitely would wouldn't pass up a, an opportunity to have one last beer with him. I can totally relate. You already know my answer, man. So uh, I get that totally. So, uh, well, well, listen, um, anything else you want to share with the folks that are watching? I mean, I know we, we've got some people watching live and, and this is obviously going to be replayed through Facebook and through been there uh, but in terms of how people can connect with you, I know that a lot of people on here that have been posting messages, they're, they're loving the fact that they're seeing you and knowing you're doing well. And my guess is you're going to, you're going to get a lot of, got a lot of action through your music and, and just through being on here. So um, anything else you want to say just in, in randomly or whatever, but uh, this, I'm going to give you about a minute to just say whatever you want, brother. So I, uh, when, when Aaron said that she set up this zoom meeting the first time, no, actually it was Sean, Sean McKeon said that she's going to do it. I, I, uh, I thought it was a great idea. Uh, I didn't realize that one, how much I would enjoy it. Two, how much I missed you guys. And uh, and three, I, I didn't realize how much it would it would preoccupy my my mind throughout the day, uh, waiting to see you guys again. You know, it, it's been so good reconnecting with you guys. Uh, that thing we had with our fathers. Ben, you have, oh, well, you have an idea of how how important it was for me. What 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 kind of a milestone it was in my life, and and you 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 Ben Vogel will always be a part of that, and uh, I'll never 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 ever forget that. It uh, it helped me get over one of my biggest traumas, and uh, and you're an angel for that, Ben. Really. <laughs> Uh, 
I would very much like to be in touch with with all kinds of people from the TAS uh, period. So I think in the Facebook you set up my my info, right? My phone number, my email, and stuff. I welcome anyone to be be in touch. I love being in touch again. Uh, no, and that's it. It was it was really interesting. I knew it was going to be interesting. <laughs> uh, you and I always were sensitive, uh, deep. <laughs> Still are, right? So. Still are, and this is without the beer. I mean, I can't can imagine <laughs> what it's like if we had a little, a little uh, beer house action going to. Oh shit! But, you and I, you and I would ball like babies. Let's be honest. Come on. <laughs> but uh, it was it. I, I I I immensely enjoyed myself, man. Thank you very That's much. Awesome. You still nervous? Because you you kept telling me you were nervous. <laughs> yeah, I was really I was nervous, and my yeah. wife was saying, you know, she's like, "What's wrong with you? You're acting weird." And, uh, <laughs> but, but no, I'm. Well, well, you know, I love you, man. You you know, you're a big inspiration to me and and, and people that are watching you. You're just one of the good ones, man. You you're a good dude, and uh, I've known you thirty plus years and nothing's changed like you're roman Gradel, man you're you're a badass people love you it's not just me saying that you can look at the comments that have chimed in but just uh thank you for being you and thank you for taking the time out and doing this and and keep the music coming man because you've got a gift i uh i want to kind of a lot of people jumped on late um but they didn't get a chance to listen to that first song and and i hope it's okay with you but i'm gonna play it again and sure and then we'll, then we'll kind of kill it off but it's it, i'm assuming it was one of your kids right that actually that actually talked uh in that first song oh yeah yeah it's uh it's eat them out yeah. yeah all right so i'm gonna thank you right now we're gonna we're gonna thank finish you. this off it's it's yeah, about sure. a five minute song and then I'll end the broadcast and then uh, hopefully you'll still stick on and, and you and I could chat for a minute. But I want people to truly listen to the talent you are, brother. So uh, here we go. Okay. Thank you. Love you. Say hi to the wife. I don't know her, but tell her, tell her we all say hi. So, all right. You too. All right, buddy. Here's the song, folks. Those of you that are singing. <laughs> All right, brother. I'm gonna say good night. I know it's getting late for you, but uh, thank you for doing this. Let's thank keep you in touch. Much. We will. All right. Absolutely. And again, uh, I just want to clarify that I will be posting all of Roman's songs. I think there's about six or seven on uh, BenThere.org after this uh, this live feed. So make sure you check that out. I'll have a couple new. Uh, I've been working on a couple new writings, and they'll be posted too. But this is about Roman and his. Uh, actually, it's. Six, seven songs, plus uh, I'm going to repost uh, Heal. 
uh, which is an unbelievable song. He wrote it about his dad, but those of you that unfortunately have lost a parent, uh, you can relate totally. So it doesn't matter who you are. It's, uh, it's significant in the world today. And, and those of you that have lost a parent, you'll, you'll uh, understand totally. So Roman, my best to you, mom, my best to your wife, best to your kids. Most importantly, best to you, brother. I love you. Take care of yourself. You right? Thank, thank you for doing this. I got thank, you, brother. Thanks for having Talk me on. Absolutely. Absolutely, Bye. brother. Cheers. Thank you guys for watching. Fanthere.org. Bye.